to build. As always, we are live from London Town. I'm Simon Atkins, and this evening we're joined by a very special guest, the beautiful star of the brand new movie Baywatch. It is Priyanka Chopra! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Priyanka, guys. a lot of love for you in the room tonight. Yes, a lot of love um, in London Town. Every time I come to London, there's so much love and affection that I feel. I started my career here almost um, in 2000 when I became Miss World, and that's what kick-started everything for me. So it's always so nice to see you guys. Thank How you. How beautiful is she looking? This dress is insane. Thank you. So listen, we're going to be talking Baywatch in just a second. But first, if you guys at home want to get in touch, then you can tweet us. Our Twitter handle is at BillSeriesLDN. That's at BillSeriesLDN. We'll try and get to some questions a little bit later on. Or you can leave us a, a comment on Facebook. But right now, we need to talk Baywatch. So obviously, it is one of the most iconic TV series of all time. If you were born in the 80s and you, were, you grew up in the 90s, you would have loved it as I did. I was completely obsessed. With it. Did you watch Baywatch as a kid? I absolutely did. I think Baywatch was such a popular show around the world. I think even a little bit more than America. Um, and I remember, I mean, I must have been like eight or seven or eight or something like that. But it used to be my mom's favorite show. And you know, in the beginning of uh, of the song, like in of the beginning of the show, and you know that song starts and it goes. Oh yes. You know the music, yes. just the. And I used to, that, that was my war cry. Like, it would be like, oh my God, that's my call to duty. So I was a big fan of Baywatch and I was a big, like, a fan of the franchise. When the movie came to me, I was like, wait, are they going to mess this up? <laughs> No, like, how do you make Baywatch, the TV show, which was a drama in the 80s, which sure. had, like, David Hasselhoff and all of that, in 2017? So for me, that was a big question. So how does this differ from the TV series, then? How do they... How has it evolved? Can you give us a little bit of insight Let's just that? say it's a very big evolution. <laughs> <laughs> this is... Um, if you take the spirit of the TV show, Baywatch, which was camaraderie, you know, um, team players, people doing something bigger than yourself, and then wrap it up with a little bit of rated R naughtiness, well, not little, all of it. <laughs> yeah, lots, lots. That's what you need to be prepared for. So people who have seen Baywatch before, this isn't, the movie is not that. It's, you, I don't think you can take um, Baywatch in 2017, make it seriously. Like, we are also making fun of ourselves in the show, sure. uh, in the movie. It's just so, it, it, you've got to be able to laugh at it, at itself and at what you do. And like Zach's, I don't know how many of you have seen the movie yet, but like Zach says once, in the movie that, oh, it sounds like you're just talking about a far-fetched TV show, or uh, unrealistically, if you remember. So that's like us just calling it out and saying, slow-mo is fun, but we do it on our pace. Yeah. You know, so that's what's a, cool it's, about it's it. It's really, really fun, and you read, as you said, you don't take yourself seriously at all, and there's loads of laughs in it. And we're gonna talk about your character in, in a second, but first, should we take a little bit of a look at a clip in your action? Oh yeah, please. Wakey, wakey, pretty little dum-dum. Such a shame. Why'd you have to go snooping? Hmm? All you had to do was be a lifeguard, get a tan, but instead, you tried to be like Mitch and save the bay. Now let's see how long you can hold your breath. No, just listen to me. Just listen to me. Go. No, you <laughs> have to listen to me. You're free. If I was a man, you'd call me driven. No! Let's go, boys. You have to listen to me. Have a nice <laughs> swim. Ooh. Sexy, sophisticated, sultry, but vicious. Vicious as hell. <laughs> you play. So she is the um, the villainess of this movie. Tell us about your character. Well, um, interestingly, my character was initially written for a man. It was called Victor Leeds which is so boring, Victoria is so much better. But um, if I may say so myself. <laughs> but it was written for Victor Leeds and I think it's so cool to have filmmakers um, who think outside of the box. It's so cool that Seth and our producers, which includes D Dwayne Johnson, by the way, thought that it would be really, really cool to take an 80s TV show which actually stood for being a little easy on the male gaze and flipping it on its yeah. head and giving a lot more to the ladies to watch this time around. And you know, having the female characters be extremely badass, and I'm not only talking about my character, but even the three lifeguards, you know, they're badass, they're kick-ass, they're strong. And my character was a guy who ended up being me. So it was it's such a cool thing to have that happen. Victoria is 
we don't I, I tried to keep her ethnically ambiguous because I, I thought it would be cool for her to just be a woman of the world who's you know playing ball in a in a man's world and she's ambitious um, there's a little bit of a backstory she has where she says in a scene that my brother was given the family business um, because he's a boy even though I had the business acumen. And that resonates to so many people around the world. And I love that Victoria was not just evil because she liked it. She came from a place of... Evil with depth. Yes. <laughs> In a comedy. Can yeah. you imagine how much I trivialize everything? <laughs> how easy or hard is it to get into that kind of character? Because obviously you play um, a completely different character in Quantico. Yeah. To, but, play, to play that character, is it, do you find it like easy to kind of just get in the zone? Um, the, my, the way I work with characters is I, before I even start a movie, I familiarize myself so much with, I do like 100% of homework and then I forget about it. So I knew who Victoria was, I knew where she came from, sure. I knew what her story is. But being a villain in a comedy is actually really difficult because it could end up being over the top or cheesy or just anything. It, it really needed to be, I had, an ins I had inspiration in my head. In my head, Victoria was like a Bond villain, you know, um, larger than life, completely narcissistic, you know, life begins and ends with her and everybody else is just a means and an inconvenience like these lifeguards. And of course, you had to go up against, you know, two of the biggest Hollywood A-listers, The Rock and um, also um, Zac Efron. How was that? I mean, first of all, I wore my highest heels. Because <laughs> you can't intimidate the rock like this, right? Yeah. You better listen to me. It had to be looking into his, uh, into his eyes. And second of all, how many, and I always say this, think about it. How many people get to say, I took on the rock and are alive to tell the story? Right? Not for me. Yeah, not too many. So I get to be one of those lucky people. But on a serious note, they were wonderful co-actors. Um, DJ is also a producer on the movie. Sure. So he really like made an effort to bring everyone together. I mean, Zach has such insane discipline. Uh, he works out so much. And he knew that he was coming into a movie like Baywatch. And he was working with Dwayne, you know, and all the girls as well. Except John Bass, who was beautiful in his natural self. <laughs> And absolutely wonderful in this movie. He's one of my favorite characters. But everybody really had, we came together like a family. It was really fun. We're going to talk about the hot bods in a minute. But first, just tell us, how did the movie come about for you? And what was it like when you read that script initially? So, I mean, my, I've, I've done a lot of Indian films. Um, Baywatch is, I think, approximately my 51st movie. Oh. Um, so I treat it as my next film. But... When I was, I was doing music in America because music is like a piece of my heart. And I was at a party and I ended up meeting, um, I ended up meeting the VP of casting for ABC. I was signed for Quantico. I ended up doing the show. Movie offers started coming my way in America. Um, and I was actually being spoken to for another part in Baywatch. And uh, that time the, the villain was still a guy and then Things got turned around and Seth and I, who's our director, got into a conversation about how would it be for me to play the villain. And I just, we just started talking about Victoria and a conversation was 20 minutes, ended up being two hours wow. because it was just creatively so much fun. And 10 minutes later, they called me and said I was doing the movie. Wow, congratulations. Um, so what is it like to do that kind of crossover to, from like Indian movies to like this blockbuster bu movie? Is that, what's that transition like for you? To me, it's not really a transition. Sure. I mean, the, the budgets of American movies are pretty much triple of the movies that I've ever done. But the demographic that Indian movies enjoy are global. And it's so wonderful to see that sort of transition of audiences happening, where people, Indian audiences, or people who enjoy Indian movies, who now maybe are seeing me, you know, in my work into America, in, in my American work, which is like Quantico or or Baywatch, and then people who don't know me, um, who are getting to know me through Quantico or Baywatch, are starting to Google my Netflix, my Indian films, and saying, "Oh, we just saw this movie," and you know, Hindi movies are blah blah blah. So for me, it's more like a cultural exchange of like educating the world about where I come from, the films that I do, and the kind of work we do in India, and at the 
same time bringing American films through me to an audience in India or people who do enjoy movies. So the, the science of filmmaking is actually the same. The technique is the same. You still have directors who are like fretting about the scene. You still have ADs standing outside your trailer and saying, oh my God, the actress is taking, is late. This actress is only like, <laughs> I hope you're always on agents. time. It's called Indian Standard Time, okay? IST. <laughs> It's we have it here, don't worry. <laughs> At least 15 minutes is allowed. Um, all my... <laughs> oh, oh, no, stop it. Don't give us a... Shh. We don't say that. She was loud. stuck in traffic, okay? She was stuck <laughs> in traffic. <laughs> you don't say it out loud. Um, but yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> That's the only difference, according to me. Everyone in Hollywood is too punctual for me. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, it's all the same. <laughs> Priyanka, there's loads of hilarious scenes in these in this movie, from like the high end pack or um, kind of action packed scenes to like obviously the, the kind of slow mos on the beach and stuff. Is there anything, um, any one scene that you loved filming? During Baywatch. Well, this was one of my favorite scenes because I had so much fun trying to... F so I, I took at least an hour, me and um, Seth, our director, to figure out what nickname I'm going to give Zac Afron. <laughs> what am I going to call him if I wanted to be condescending? So we thought of, A, abs. We thought of gold medalist. We thought of, oh, wannabe swimmer, whatever. We thought of so many things. But Pretty Little Dum Dum was my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Who came up with that? Was that you? No, I'll never take credit for it. No, it was the director. No, it, um, yeah, but you know, coming up with things like that, I think for me creatively, was so much fun in the movie to like think of, odd, um, like there's a scene I do where I'm yelling at my henchmen, my minions, and I put my heel into their foot. And the whole scene, I'm just talking to them with my heel in their foot. And I'm just, and I have a smile on my face, but my heel is in his foot. Vicious. That was Vicious. my idea though. <laughs> um, we have to talk about Victoria's fashion sense in this um, movie, because when every, while everyone else is running around in skimpy um, swimwear, you are in she didn't need haute it. couture all the time. Did you have any, um, any input in the fashion design or, or the picking of the costumes for this movie? Well, my only note to Dana Pink, who's our wardrobe stylist and who's done an amazing job, was that I just wanted Victoria, that every outfit she wore should be a power move, because she's a power chick, you know? Like, she wears a big men's Rolex on her hand. She wears a big pinky diamond ring. She's, she, her hair doesn't move out of place. Her heels are always super high. And even on a beach, she wears couture. She's so absurd that it's fabulous. She wears heels on a beach. A little stool comes out for her to stand on so she can address the crowd on a beach. She's, it's, it's so stupid, it's great. You're giving it all away. <laughs> Those are things they know. <laughs> so listen, so we have to talk about your own fashion sense because you are impeccably dressed tonight, is she not? I need to say it again because she looks Thank insane. You. Thank you. Do you have any fashion muses or people that you look up to in the fashion world? Well, I love, well, women and men who have a point of view when they dress. I feel like when it's, when style is, when you overthink it, then it's not you anymore. It has to, there has to be a point of view and a personality. What are you feeling, you know? People who dress according to what they feel, that's a lot of fun. Like, I love Rihanna, the way she dresses. She always has a point of view. She's always, she wears what she feels. And I think that confidence is really cool. I love, um, I loved Audrey Hepburn. She was who Amazing. she, what she wore was what she was. I love Rekha, who's an Indian actress. She's, what she is, her elegance and the way she is, you know, so I, I I like personality in clothes, and I try and give myself that as well. If you could describe your fashion sense in three words, it's a tough one, what would it be? What would those three words be? Comfortable, most important. These are extremely comfortable. <laughs> they look it. Saying. They are. Six I inches. can run a marathon on them. <laughs> comfortable, uh, chic, and elegant, I think. Lovely. Yes, come on, another round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. I see all these nods. <laughs> you know, you guys, you can say it. We're having a conversation. <laughs> so back to Baywatch. I mean, obviously, as I said, this is such an iconic movie to um, be a part of. Was there pressure to do it justice from your part? I was the only new character in, uh, in the movie. So I had luxury. I had the ability to make my character whatever I wanted. Um, I think the pressure on me was that, and I, I did feel it a couple of times, even though I've done a lot of features before, but 
I felt like, uh, okay, this is my first English language film. I, I, I'm an Indian girl. Do I, will I be able to translate that? Is the world ready for a girl who looks like this to be a mainstream villain um, in a mainstream global movie? Is the world ready? F and I thought that during Quantico as well. You know, I was taking on a part which was a quintessential American girl. She has nothing to do with where I'm not even American Indian. I'm Indian Indian, mm. you know. So I, I used to get a little worried about that, but I've seen so much love and acceptance with at least both these parts that I've played, and they've both been extremely mainstream. So it's a very conscious decision on my end to be able to play parts which break the stereotype of what someone who looks like me should play. I think, thank you. I really do think that, you know. Thank you. But I really do think, you know, people are put in boxes and we've created sure. so many divisions between us of what someone should be, what someone looks like, and they should be doing that. Whereas we completely forget that art transcends borders. Art transcends language. Hindi movies, which we speak Hindi, which is only in India, and they transcend the world. People all over the world watch Hindi movies, not only people who are from India, but who enjoy the experience and the culture of it. So I just think that, you know, we need champions and, and people who actually take that on upon themselves to create and pave the way for everybody else who will come. I hope the next generation of actors that come into movies through the work that I've done or through Baywatch, like look at what Baywatch used to be in the 80s and look at the diversity today. That is what entertainment needs to look like and that should be norm. It should not be unique. Well said, Priyanka. <laughs> now, can we please talk about can we please talk about working with Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Z Zac Efron? Oh, what a trouble. What, was what that an like? awful life. <laughs> so, what, who would want that job? <laughs> it must have been a laugh a minute on set, was it? You know, I don't want to bust the bubble, but it was a really difficult movie to shoot. It's a comedy, but it was really hard, no joke. You know, Miami is like 100 degrees. It's really hot. We're on this beach for 15 hours a day for four months. I imagine in, in like under the sun. I, at least because of Victoria, had people holding umbrellas over me. <laughs> it might have been Priyanka, but... Uh, <laughs> but the others, like, didn't... You know, they were always on the beach and on the sun. So it was really difficult. The action was big. Everyone had to be really disciplined to look the way they did. But whenever we were done filming and in between action and cut, those are the times we had most fun because our characters were fun, the film was more fun, and we all got on so well that after we wrapped, when they weren't in the gym, we would meet for dinner and like go out or hang out. It was really great. So that's my next question. Obviously, everybody in the movie is completely ripped to shreds. What were they eating on set, or rather not eating to stay in that kind of shape? Well... I don't, none of them were starving, none of them. Okay. They, no, I, I thought that that's what it would be, but obviously that doesn't work. Apparently, I've heard that starving is not really good. Um, but no, eating, they, were, they had a very regimented lifestyle, like especially, I saw it with Zach and Dwayne, um, because most of my scenes were with them. But like, they would eat every three hours, they would work out for like two hours every day, and it was, you know, Dwayne wakes up at some ridiculous four o'clock in the morning to train. For, or something. Oh. So they, you, they had. I used to emotionally eat out of guilt. What, yeah. <laughs> no, have you ever had friends like, you know, when they really go to the gym and they're like, oh my God, I have to wake up tomorrow morning and go to the gym. You get hungry thinking about, out of guilt. Uh, that happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> I used to get stressed. <laughs> but then you sad. just get up and like, no, I'm just gonna have my Weetabix. No, I would eat. I would pick up a pack packet of Doritos from Crafty every time. Yes. Every time Zach, in between scenes, he had these resistance, um, what are they called? Wait. Resistance ropes. Yeah. Oh, ro oh, ropes Clearly sorry. I don't Wait. work out very much. <laughs> Those resistance rope thingies. And he used to keep like working on his biceps or doing push-ups. And I remember I used to just like, I would marvel at it. And suddenly I'd be marveling at it with Dorito bag in my hand. <laughs> I don't know what happened in the middle. <laughs> when I got it, when I went to my craft. But it was emotional eating, you guys. But I mean, talk about torture for them. They're working out and you're like, torture mm, these for tasty me. chili Doritos. <laughs> no, but uh, like Kelly Roback, another one, she eats pizza and like, she was my pizza partner. She would eat whatever she wanted. That, but she's a 
Sports Illustrated supermodel. Of course, she looks the way she does. I used to hate her for it, but um, yeah, but she was my pizza partner. So everyone's really chill. It's not like you can't eat. You just have to train enough to be able to make sure you don't see it on you. Sure. <laughs> um, another spoiler alert. Obviously, um, David Hasselhoff and Pamela Anderson make a cameo appearance. Woo! Yes. Woo! Um, old school. Um, what was it like meeting them? And is David Hasselhoff as wacky in real life as he is? <laughs> All right, first, I don't want to get in trouble. Define wacky. <laughs> out there, out there on the perimeter Listen, of life. I have to be life. very careful. <laughs> what is David Hasselhoff like? Come on. Um, first of all, I mean, they're the OGs. They're, the, they're, they're what this show was. And it was very important to have their blessing while we were making this film. And they were so wonderful. Um, Pamela Anderson, I remember, I mean, like you said, being a 90s kid, she was on every boy I knew, everyone's wall. I don't remember the 90s without Pamela Anderson. I'm sure, like, none of you do. Um, so it was wonderful. I met her for just a brief while at the premiere in Miami. But David Hasselhoff, interestingly, actually, after he finished filming, called me because I wasn't on set. I wasn't filming with them. And uh, he said that I was really looking forward to meeting you. I love India, and I love Indian movies, and I would love to be a part of an Indian movie. So, you know, my brain started working. Yeah, exactly. Imagine the Hoff in a Bollywood movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch it. I'd watch it. <laughs> so I was like, hmm, Victoria's thinking. <laughs> um, can we just bring but it back? he's wonderful, coming back to it. He's just so gracious and so wonderful. Can we bring it back to when you first started out? Because at 17, you were Miss India. And then I was you went pretty on. little dumb dumb. <laughs> and then you went on to win Miss World in 2000. What was that experience like for you? And has that kind of paved the path for your career now? I have to be very honest that when I was 17 and 18 when I became, respectively, when I became Miss India and Miss World, it was the beginning of me even entertaining the idea of show business in my head because I wanted to be an engineer. I was a physics math student. I wanted to be an aeronautical engineer. I wanted to build planes. I wanted to be in NASA. I come from an extremely academic family. No one in my wildest dreams in my family had imagined show business as a career. My grandmother, in fact, still asked me till about 10 years ago, what do you do? <laughs> so I said, I'm an actor. Yeah, yeah, but what do you, act, like, what's, what's your job? What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, trust an Indian grandmother to ask you that. <laughs> but, um, so what changed with me when I, when, when I became Miss World, which happened in London, actually, it, it gave me a sense of self. I, when I was a teenager, I had a lot of self-esteem issues like most teenagers do, you know. You don't know what's happening with you. You don't know what your body is going through. You don't know. I was gawky. My hair was all funny and frizzy, and I didn't know what to do with it. I had so much of it. I, yeah, and like I hated braids, and my mom would make them. And, you know, so I had all of those issues. Even when I was in America, I went to high school in America, and um, I was very confused with who I was and what I was supposed to be. Um, I was bullied in school a little bit, not by everyone, but I had a bully. And she just made my life miserable and used to, you know, h hate on me basis where I came from. I think that's probably all she knew to hurt me. She used to call me curry, she used to call me brownie, she used to say, go back to your country on the elephant you came on. And it got really, at 15, it got really hard for me. Sure. So I decided, you know, I want to go back to India and I went back home. And I feel like that's when destiny played its game. My mom randomly sent photos without telling me to Miss India. I didn't know. I just thought that they called me because I was discovered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> teenage egos. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then um, it, it gave me a sense of confidence that I could walk onto the stage speak the way I speak, and I've been raised to be an opinionated girl. My parents always told me, if you have an opinion, don't be afraid to share it. And that's all I did. I didn't know how to walk on heels. I tripped on my sari backstage five times. And then I was in like these velvet pants with boots on, and then I tripped on it again. <laughs> I knew it would happen to me on stage. I still have PTSD about it. But but I'm just saying, like it, it gave me a sense of the fact that my personality and the way I speak and my confidence is what won me that crown made me feel like confidence is your best accessory. There is nothing else you need. If you, the only thing you need to wear well is your confidence. Again, well said, Priyanka.
Um, before we throw to the audience, I just want to ask, quickly ask you about your work for UNICEF. You have recently be, been um, announced as Global Ambassador. Why is that so important to you? Well, first of all, I feel that philanthropy is, is something that is between you and God. It's very, it's, it's, it's just your journey. Um, my, my parents were extremely socially conscientious. They were very aware of the world and giving back. And I feel like we live in such privileged societies all of us sitting over here who have clean water to drink and, and you know, who have homes and roofs over our heads and clothes to wear and actually have different clothes to wear every day. We forget that there are parts of the world where people don't have that because we take it so much for granted. So as a society, it is on us to bring light to parts of the world which are forgotten. Which are forgotten not because they should be, but which are forgotten because they don't have a voice. And as a public person, I've been UNICEF's uh, ambassador now. I've worked with UNICEF for 15 years, 10 years as their ambassador in India, and now as their global ambassador. And it's just such a sense of, I feel for me as a public person, accomplishment when I go to a place and I can actually be the voice for people who don't have a voice and actually have world media get attention. Like for example, my trip to Zimbabwe right now with, with um, UNICEF was, tremendously heartbreaking for me because I've dealt with a lot of problems with adolescent children, children and girls because I feel very strongly about education and taking care of our future but we were talking about sexual violence against girl children. The numbers are staggering. One out of three girls under the age of 18 has been sexually violated in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is probably going through its worst economic crisis. I mean, if I tell you stories, it, we, this is not the platform for it, or I mean, everything is, but it changed me so much when I got out of there. But the fact that I could go there and so many of you are talking about it, which means you now have the responsibility of being able to do something about it. That is what, I'm a means to an end. And I'm so glad that I'm, I can be that means for, for this. That's why it's important to me. That's great. Great work. Um, Priyanka, before we go, we can go, we're going to throw to the audience for a couple of questions. Of Who's got our first question? Okay. Go for it. Baywatch is an iconic movie. Are there any other iconic, iconic movies that you would like to be a part of? You know, I feel like now that I'm working in America, I must at least have superpowers. <laughs> it, right? Like... I, <laughs> I mean, that's what I want to have superpowers. That's the only thing that I know. I don't know what that means, but I want to have like read minds or telekinesis or do one of those things, like move things, like get a car to like blow up or um, I don't know. That's the only thing that I think. But you, I can't plan. You don't plan your career thinking like that's the next thing I want to do. I, you know, films come to me and I choose from whatever I get. Next question. Next question. Here we go. The, mi the mic's part being passed. Hi. Hi, Priyanka. Hi. Hi. You played a, vi um, a villain in Baywatch. So is there, are there any villain roles you'd like to play? More villain roles? Yeah, any other villain. You I mean, I always love being bad. <laughs> <laughs> so She's a bad you. girl. <laughs> hey, and there's nothing wrong with being a bad girl. Um, <laughs> the way I see it, I, I, like I said, I don't know. I mean, if a great, if an amazing character comes to me, which resonates to me, I would do it. Victoria resonated to me because she's so different in the movie. I wanted her to be like abnormal in this normal, beautiful Baywatch world. So if something like that comes along, of course I would do it. I mean, I don't see it as villain or hero. I just see it as great parts. And do we have one more question from the audience? Hello, Priyanka. We have a question from Twitter. Of course. Um, you've been in over 50 movies in India. Do you see I think yourself? I'm going to stop saying that now. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a lot. <laughs> Do you see yourself doing more um, Hollywood or do you think you'll go back to doing more Indian movies? I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I think, you know, we live in a world today where on your cell phones you have entertainment from Iran to UK to Australia to America to India. I want to be able to w go wherever my work takes me. English and Hindi both are my first languages. I would love to learn another language and do a film or work somewhere else as well. I'm an artist and I'm an actor and that's all I want to do. I just want to be an entertainer and the language and countries don't matter. Thank you, audience. Priyanka, before we finish up, I need to ask you, who is your all-time favourite Baywatch babe? Are you team Pamela Anderson, team Yasmin Bleeth, or somebody else? Team Anderson or team Bleeth? 
because I was a brunette, I loved Yasmin Bleeth, I have to say. <laughs> I related with her so much more, it's the worst thing to say, but I was like, oh, wow, she has hair like mine. Wow, she's so pretty. I mean, I love Pamela Anderson, but she, like, I was like, how can someone look so incredible? It was intimidating, her beauty. But so was Yasmin, I guess. But I would be Team Yasmin, I think. She's <laughs> Team Yasmin. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for, um, Priyanka. It was so nice to talk to you. Give it up one more time for Priyanka Thank you. Thank Chopra. You. Thank you. The movie's out now. Go and watch it. The theatre near you. Whoop. <laughs>